that all you've got to do? Making a whistle for a kid. I suppose you've done nothing about my barrels of high-grade ore. I've been thinking about that right along. Everybody knows Whit Lacey did it. Why didn't you get a posse and ride out after him? Didn't know which way to ride. Excuse me. Don't get too riled up over Sam, Mr. Martin. He's getting old. Well, he'd better show some energy or I'm going to have to write a strong letter to Washington. Evening, Miss Lynn. Julianne. You ladies going out for a ride this fine evening? We're going shopping. And I have no intention of leaving town. You'll be very sorry to hear. Kind of late to go shopping, is it? Barnaby will be about closing up. We work late and sleep late, so we have to shop late. Can we go, Sheriff? Didn't mean to hold you up. There's enough people being held up around here. Oh, good evening. I was just closing up. But come in, though. Thanks. I've got some nice new stockings, Miss Julianne. Uh, real lace and embroidered. Now, where do I put... Oh, here they are. Yeah. I'm sorry, but I'm just closing up. Well, just be a minute. I want a coconut. A coconut? What's them? I saw them in the window. Oh. See anything green? Anybody ever tell you you're a handsome heifer? A fellow said it once in just that tone of voice. He died shortly after with a little hole through his gizzard. I like women that give off sparks. So, that's a coconut. You know, when they came up on the stage, I didn't know what they was. What are they good for? It hasn't got the right label on it. It's imported. Maybe you're afraid to try something new. I don't scare easy. Mmm. It's wonderful. It tastes sweet. It's something like... Uh... Like nectar. Uh, nectar? Never heard of that before, either. But I'll have some up on the next stage. Heard a shot. Come in the back door. Oh, it's nothing. Just opening up a coconut. What's your name? Answering questions is now one of my favorite pastimes. Stand to one side, ladies. Your lamps are mine. I thought I'd be lucky today. Saw the crisscross spider web this morning. That's always good luck. Your name's John Drum. These people in Texas want you so bad the mouse are watering. They want you for $1,500 worth of reward. I'll have that gun. He went out the back way. Come on, we can't do any good around here. I think I'm going to play. Babs, don't try to act like a lady. Don't be scared, ladies. We got all the buildings out back surrounded. We get that fella sure. get to my horse for taking this nice-looking sorrel. That happens to be mine. Sorry, can't guarantee when you'll get him back. I really think I'm going to scream. Got a nice white neck. It'd be too bad if I had to get it all black and blue throttling you. Don't yell. Seen anything of him? Nope. He must have ridden out of town already. How's the sheriff? Dead. Shot clean through the heart. Get my horse. It's too bad I have to get out of here. I have a hunch if somebody rubbed us together, we'd both make sparks.
There he goes. There's a war party up north. My Uncle Gilly's seen them. There's always a war party up north. They're down south if you listen to everything everybody says. My Paul just said, pack up. We're getting. Got any 44 cottages you can spare, mister? Sure. Thanks, mister. You better come into Deadwood with us. Your Uncle Gilly's seeing things. Well, I hope you don't find your hair drying in a suit teepee. You fought Indians before. Kind of like the way you were handling the deal until that buck with a rifle got on your back. You just sat there and watched the whole thing. I enjoyed the whole show. <laughs> Had a good seat. Anyway, thanks for taking that guy with a long gun off my back. Finally. <laughs> yeah, I figure it saved your life. Quien salva una vida se hace responsable por ella. That Spanish is too fast for me. <laughs> he who saves a life assumes its burdens. That buys you off, huh? That's what they say in Mexico. 
I'm with Lacey. John Drum. You're kind of wanted around these parts, aren't you, Whit? You and I ought to get along fine, Johnny. Indian Eddie told me you just shot the sheriff in Deadwood. You can't be slow. Sam was mighty sudden. Dice fell my way. <laughs> Never had anything against Sam, except the badge he wore on his chest. This piece of paper says you're on pretty bad down in Coese County, Texas. So I hear. Didn't stay in Texas long enough to find out. <laughs> Anybody see you besides the two girls in Barnaby? Just a storekeeper and the two girls. Uh, Lynn and Julianne. That's Julianne's horse. Yeah, I think it was. You're in luck, Johnny. They're friends of mine. They won't talk. Barnaby? Julianne can handle him, if I say so. You're too anxious to do that, so you must need me. There must be a profit in it someplace. Where do I stand on that? <laughs> you speak right up for yourself, don't you, Johnny? Well, there is a profit in it. You're in for a cut of it. It'd be kind of nice if I could see all the cards. You're going back to town. So long, Whit. Look out, Johnny. Over there. What's the idea? Oh, sorry, Johnny, but I just couldn't let you ride out like that. I feel like talking a little now. What about? About that favor I wanted. You know, I could let the posse find you here. They'd really like to hang the man that downed old Sam. Don't give me much choice. Thought you'd see it that way. Julianne's a friend of mine. Particular friend. Trouble is, the sheriff's office knows that. They're waiting for me to show up in town or for her to try and leave. They can't stop her, can they? No, but they're watching her. She's followed every place she goes. They know that sooner or later she'll lead them to me. She makes pretty good looking bait for their trap. Yeah, but sometimes a smart lobo can steal a bait without getting caught. Running into you gave me an idea. Where do I fit in? You're getting married. Me? Yes, Johnny. You. Oh, no. I always figured on passing up getting married. Well, I don't generally go around endorsing it. But any sensible man would figure that's better than having his wind cut off with a six-strand rawhide rope. Since you put it that way, who's the bride? Julianne. Yeah, that's the part I don't like, but listen to this, Johnny. You're an old friend who turns up, always wanted to marry Julianne. She's tired of waiting for me and decides you wouldn't be so bad after all. Now, once she's married, she can leave town without being followed. You can bring her here to me. The idea kind of appeals to me at that. I'd rather it was the other one, but... Uh, just in case you're getting any fancy ideas, Julie won't really be your wife. The sky pot it will look all right, but that's all. Suits me. How about untying me and giving me some more of the details? Sure, Johnny. Of course, I trust Julianne, but they got another saying in Mexico. A handsome caballero is the fire on which the beans of many a lady get burned. Oh, the sweetest thing in life, and no one dare sing it. On a Saturday afternoon, he's walking down Broadway. Well, some prefer the park or the beach to spend their day. But I prefer to walk down the festive gay Broadway. Walking down Broadway, the festive gay Broadway. The okay thing on Saturday is walking down Broadway. 
Walking down Broadway, the festive gay Broadway. The okay thing on Saturday is walking down Broadway to the theatre comique where Captain Jinx is holding sway. And then up to Delmonico's for supper, oh so gay. A turn around the battery with horses stepping high. The pretty girls in finery all smile as they pass by. Walking down Broadway, the festive gay Broadway. The okay thing on Saturday is walking down Broadway. Walking down Broadway, the festive gay Broadway. The okay thing on Saturday is walking down Broadway. There's someone waiting in Julie's dressing room. Wait. Who else would it be? Stopped a waiter in the hallway. Sent for Barnaby, too. Wait. Where are you? Ouch! Well, you give off sparks, too. Not for you, Mr. Romeo. Romeo? She's beautiful and she reads, too. Why did you come back here? See, Julianne. Say, you know you've got pointed ears? Oh, thank you to mind your own business. You know what it means when a girl's got pointed ears? I've not got pointed ears. And I don't want any more conversation about me or my ears. Just you wait till Whit Lacey hears about this. He sent me here. I'll bet he did. Mm. Makes the hair in the back of my neck stand up. What's it mean? Hmm? What does what mean? When a girl has pointed ears. My lady with her dainty pointed ears. My lady like a vixen fox is warm. Passion boils in her veins. Her lips and arms are warm for me. Her heart is feverish, burning. Well, I like that. Who said that? A fellow named John Gay. I've not got pointed to you. I thought Whit was here. That's what I thought. Yep, yeah, Whit was right. You're going to make a beautiful bride. Whit said that? Mm-hmm. And he's sorry you can't be here for the wedding. What was that? We're getting married, Julie. Whit says so right here. You want to see me, Tom? You better go in Julie's dressing room. Oh. You sure you like the idea? Of course. Don't tell me if you don't want to, but where do you think you and Whit will be going? To California. He used to spend hours talking about it. It's a new country. People aren't so particular about other people or what they've been. Julianne, I don't know what you want to talk to me about that you couldn't get it well and waited until... You know you... Why, you know they... Barnaby, this is, shall we say, Mr. Corrigan. He's a friend of Whit Lacey's. A very good friend. Aren't you going to say good evening? Good evening. You didn't give any descriptions to Tap or anybody after the shooting. Oh, no. Not a soul. They didn't ask me. Well, we just wanted to ask you. Have you ever seen Mr. Corrigan before? Uh, what do you want me to say, Julie? Whatever you think healthiest. I've never seen the man before in my life. You're smart. Smart people don't wear out so fast. Hey, sir, that all you wanted, Julie? That's all. Come on, Barnaby. Why, I'm glad to. You're buying me a drink. Oh, the drink. I'd be glad to buy you a drink, yes. Tears for Julianne? Why don't you mind your own business? Why did she have to fall in love with a man on the run? It's easy for a man to get on the run. A few cross words, fast draw. One man's dead and the other one's on the run. You ought to know. I do. Can I say good night? Good night. You cry.
pride for Julianne. Is she your sister? She is my friend. Night. I pronounce you man and wife. Kiss the bride. It is the next bride. Oh! <laughs> Charlie, get me a bottle of champagne and a deck of cards. Yes, Mrs. Corbin. The name is still Julianne. A bottle of champagne for Miss Julianne and a deck of cards. What? Sure, she told me to bring them up. Come on in, honey. Give me the glasses, Lynn, will you? Red knave first. That's good. Queen and double sixes. A journey. All that we know was coming true. Ace of diamonds. Money. Ah, uh, nobody with any sense would believe that stuff. That's clever. You're a funny person for a gunman. Maybe he wasn't always a gunman. Maybe it took him quite some time to figure out what he's best fitted for. Notice how her voice always gets saw edges on it when she talks to me? I don't think she likes me. One thing doesn't prove the other. Like me and Wit. At first, everything we said to each other had an edge on it. And then one night, he kissed me. And all of a sudden, we both knew that up to then, we'd been making empty words. See? Good night, Romeo. She doesn't believe I'm sincere. Most men aren't. At least not the ones we meet around here. I hope you two will be very happy. Ain't every man gets a chance to see his own funeral. Don't know as I rightly like it, though. Seems kind of ghostly-like. Here's my cousin Pete, all red-eyed, mostly from corn, not from grief. And there's Banker Haven, sad as can be. But probably wondering, will my house bring money enough at auction to cover the mortgage? Come on, I want to buy some things. But the funeral, I personally laid out Sam in that box. Come on. I, uh... Town's gonna miss old Sam. Well. Yeah. One down the funeral, chap. You won't have much trouble looking sad. Just remember, it's all play acting, and you ain't really got my job yet. <laughs> Catch on? <laughs> That'll do it. Well, kind of hardy for a dead man, isn't it? You know, I was kind of surprised when I heard about this marriage business. I didn't count on that. Nor me. I just thought they'd figure the man that got the sheriff would be a fine addition to their crowd. Whit got a smart idea. Thought if Julianne had a husband, it'd keep you fellas from stepping on her heels every minute. Wedding was a fake, of course. <laughs> I kind of thought as much. <laughs> you know, 
There must be some townspeople mixed up in this. Their information on the wagon movements is much too accurate. We'll coast a while, find their hideout, and get the whole crowd. Mm, big plan, but good. But I don't relish the idea of playing dead all the time. It's kind of confining. But we'll try it anyway, huh? <laughs> I gotta get started on my honeymoon. Well, it's not a bad deal at that. There's lots of fellas wouldn't shy away from the honeymoon with Julianne, you know. <laughs> on a little hunting trip. My wife tells me you people have a habit of tailing her every time she steps outside the town limits. Well? It's an unhealthy habit. You haven't got any antlers on your head. You wouldn't look good mounted over a fireplace. Now, wait a minute. Hold it. Look, Sam that was sheriff before he was killed, maybe he had a reason for following Miss Julianne. Well, I'm sheriff now. I got no reason to follow her. See you. You sure let him jingle his spurs out loud. Still waters run deep. That was a lot meeker than I thought he'd be. Half just tall, not big. Don't you get tired of this? Passes the time. Look, Lynn, it's a view. Are my ears pointed? <laughs> no. You can come out from behind those tamaracks, friends. I've been listening to you for ten minutes. Oh. You've got good eyes and ears, Johnny. I've gone clean through a Sioux war party without being seen or heard. Oh, darling, I never thought I'd see you again. <laughs> you think I'd run off and leave you married to a man you hardly know? <laughs> Take care of this, Leonard. Julianne and I are going to need it. I stayed about two miles behind the ladies. I don't think we were followed. I'm right sure you weren't. Had men covering you almost in the town limits. Nobody followed. Oh, that's Biden Kump. <laughs> Bide's the ugliest one. <laughs> Hello, Kump. I'm Bide. He's Kump. Hey, that's handsome. Do one of me and Julianne, will you, Johnny? Sure. Make yourself comfortable, honey. I've got to meet here before we move. You're going to go someplace with these men. Yeah, that's right. A little business trip. Thought we'd have it done before now, but things got delayed. Darling, I don't want anything to happen. It won't. <laughs> California's a long way. We need a little traveling money. <laughs> That'll be Calico. You're late, Calico. Bringing him here. I don't like it. I don't like it a bit. Never mind what you like. What's the play down south? You uh, want I should talk in front of him? Even if you don't like it one bit. Well, the trail herd's getting close, but I got a hot tip on another proposition. 800 rifles and 6,000 rounds of cartridges being freighted in over the powder. Four men guard. This fellow will pay $10 a rifle. Now we can jump the outfit at the gorge. No go. But it's $8,000, twice what the trail herds was. I said no go. I don't like... Calico, you say that once more and I'm going to kick your teeth in. I'm tired of hearing what you don't like. I don't want to sound like a soft hand, but... That fella sure was figuring on selling them rifles to the Indians. They give 50 ponies for a rifle. White knight on a white horse, huh? Have it your way. Nice shooting, Johnny. I'd hate to lose Calico, even though he does get a little proddy once in a while. Even Steven. Bueno, hombre. Julie, you and Lynn ride back on up to the cabin. Wait for me there. Biden and Kump will go with you. You go too, Johnny. Uh, you'd better ride blindfolded. Well, where are we going? There's still nothing wrong with the trail, Herd. There's my traveling money, Calico.
must be good stock if they're figuring on selling to the cavalry remount. We'll save them the trouble. He's hurt bad. He's 30 miles to the nearest pool. It takes good tough horses to stand up in this part of the country. We run them pretty hard sometimes. So I've heard. Anytime you get any more like those, the army will pay top prices. I'll remember that. Try to get around again next year. Rather have the cash, I suppose. It's handier. Just sign across the bottom. Funny thing about you fellows, it isn't money unless you've got it right in your... Excuse me. We picked him up out on patrol. Take him to the doctor. Wait a minute. What's the matter? Those are our horses. The ones they stole last night. Hey! Sergeant after him!
Doesn't look like you had much luck. I don't even want to talk about it. Supper's about ready. You better get washed up. Got this buck right outside the door this morning. This reminds me of the Big Bend country. Got a nice spread there, Fork River Ranch. Fork River? Ah, I've seen the brand. Figure on living there someday. When all the sheriffs have died off? Well, she never misses a chance to dig her spurs in, does she, Johnny? Rise and biscuits. You know, someday, when all the sheriffs have died off, I'm gonna find me a gal that can make rice and biscuits and take her to live on my Fork River Ranch. <laughs> if lead poisoning doesn't set in before then. Or in case you don't come down with shortening of the breath. Sis, we never mentioned hanging in this house. It's what the Indians call bad medicine. Let's take a walk. Unexpected invitation. You usually act like I was a coiled diamondback. I just wanted to give them a chance to be alone. Ouch. Want to know something, Lynn? We're not going to California. I didn't say that. I said you'd have to go back to town for a while. Until I can send for you. And when will that be? I don't know, a few days maybe. You don't mind, do you, Johnny? Not at all. Matter of fact, I like being a married man. Might have to try it sometime. Oh, and hunting, eh? Yeah, have that tan for me. Oh, sure. Got any slickers? Oh, plenty of them. Now follow me. We went in from here. I drew these in the next couple of days. If we can get a surveyor to draw a triangulation line between those three peaks, the point where they intersect will be the hideout. Mm -hmm. That's right, smart thinking. I'll get an army surveyor over the far outpost. Once we get the hideout mapped out, it'll be easy to find that narrow passage going in. Real narrow, you said. I wrote it going in and coming out in the dark, blindfolded. And that's the way it'll be when I go in again. But it was narrow, all right. Wit have any suspicion of you? I like Wit. I feel a little like that fellow that took the 30 pieces of silver. Fella I might know? Nope. 30 pieces of silver. That must have been something happened before I was made sheriff. Yes, I guess it was. Fancy on the Fancy on. Just 
lost a love note from me to you. Lynn, have a drink? No, thank you. Oh, sit down a minute. Oh, but I'm tired. I have to go back. Well, what's a minute or two out of a lifetime? Come on. All right. Sit down. Thank you. You are. Uh, sure you won't? No, thank you very much. I need a little relaxation. My stockholders are screaming murder. You'd think these holdups were my fault. You'd think it was my fault the veins petering out. Well, it won't be long. I'm going back east. Oh, is that so? I like to take you with me. You know the answer. Well, I've heard it often enough. But, Lynn, you've got quality. I can't imagine you not wanting to get away from all this. But I do want to get away from all this. Well, then. Uh... No. Almost all relationships are compromises, Lynn. And marriages, too. Now, look at what I've got to offer. A way out of this life. Money. Security. Then, marriages aren't made in heaven. Maybe not. But wouldn't it be wonderful if they were? Good night. bawling about? I'm not. You are too crying. What about? I'm all right. If anybody around here Nobody tries... has done anything to me. She's crying for a very primeval reason. I'm not crying. She's crying because she must. Because at a certain time in every female's life, she begins to discern that the laws of percentage present an almost insurmountable obstacle to each female finding the exact male who is right for her. In short, she's discovered that the world isn't perfect. Well, I must say, if you're talking sense, you managed to hide it behind a lot of educated words. I went to school and I learned to read. Don't hold it against me. I can't make any sense out of either one of you. Lynn, your Mr. Martin is a very practical man. Very logical. He is not my Mr. Martin. You were listening. Let's say that I couldn't help overhearing. So you're not going to marry the wealthy Mr. Martin and go and live in the East just because you don't love him? I have my own reasons. You continue to rise in my estimation. You know what I'd like more than anything? For you to come and live on my Fork River Ranch. You men. With your shooting and guns and killings, why can't you be just like... Going hunting. Give me a box of 44s. Got that hunting for a girl? Yes. Good morning. Good hunting. Thanks. I can't understand anybody chasing off into the hills after deer when you can shoot a buck any morning right here in the edge of town. Stalking them's fun, some people think. That brings me right to the point. Why don't you do something about Quit Lacey? Mr. Martin, I could tell you something that'd make your eyes pop out. Uh huh? But I gotta keep quiet. Just don't you worry none about Quit Lacey. Is it too early to buy a drink? My watch is plumb stopped. Well, come on, then. Any and Eddie around? I got an errand for him. He's asleep outside, Mr. Martin. Oh, hell. Get up. Did 
still haven't changed your mind? I like having my own way. I said I'd send for you, didn't I? But why should we have to wait? I have enough money to get us to California, and enough to keep us going for a while after we get there. Either you want to go, Mr. Whitlacy, or you don't. Of course I want to. I... Well, then I don't see what you have to argue about. A man ought to know better than to try arguing with a woman. All right, we'll go. What spoke to you? You better send the women inside. You make a big jingle for a small buck. This is serious, Whit. Go inside. Says here you're an army officer. You didn't kill that sheriff. He's alive. Came from a man who's got to know, Johnny. Mind if I go inside? Just be a minute. Go ahead. We're in no hurry. I don't like... Shut up. Come, throw a saddle on Johnny's horse. We'll give him a run for it. You can use the rifle yourself. I'm going to enjoy that. I told you that what I wanted most was for you to live on that ranch, raise a flock of kids. I was making real medicine. There isn't time to tell you. A lot of the other things I meant to never got around to. I wish we could have come out even. Me? I liked you, Johnny. But nobody knows what number will come up next on the big wheel. You girls stay here. If I was you, I'd get my spurs red kicking that pony. Calico is quite a shot. Gonna cut loose the second you pass those two trees. Thanks. It ain't much of a chance, but it's better than the one you got coming. So long, Whit. Wait a minute, Johnny. The Indians always give a warrior wampum to pay his way across the big ferry. Gig your pony. Adios. It'll be out in a second, Calico. Give me another rifle. Ah, here you're shaking so as you couldn't hit the side of a barn. It's a long shot now. Stand easy. Well, you did it, Calico. Why didn't you see that rifle was clear before the party started? I'm getting out of here. This hideout'll be too full of strangers to suit me. I got packing to do. <laughs> you just inherited a ranch in Texas. I guess he really wanted to see you live on his ranch. Lynn Connors, sole heir. Forked River Ranch, Cohesi County, Texas. Wait. I missed him. Oh, thank you. You've been loading guns too long ever to put a cartridge in a magazine the wrong way. The top cartridge is in the magazine backwards. You ain't fooling me. I'm gonna miss Johnny. It's gonna get lonely out there in the brush with no one to talk to but you. That Johnny, he rubbed me the right way. He had class. So we come to the fork in the road, eh? Looks like it. I'm going out over the mountains. You'll have to go out the trail. The hills are too rough for the women. I hope they nail you going through the canyon. Adios. Calico never smelled too good, but I'm gonna miss him, too. We covered many a rough mile together. Wait. I don't know what to say. Nothing to say. I always have been too soft-hearted for my own good. Hey, we'd better get down that canyon before we meet people coming up. <laughs> and now, what are you crying about? I thought I acted like a real nice citizen. <laughs> What's everybody bawling about? 
Hey, wait! You better lead, Wit. I'll cover the rear. <laughs> Can't think of anybody I'd rather have. There's nobody down there. Rest easy, friend. We didn't know who it was. I didn't expect to see you. Series of events. That army surveyor measured them cross lines and found the gap in the hills. Indian Eddie left town on a fast horse riding hard. I always figured he was Wit's messenger boy. You figured right. He brought a note to the gang saying that you weren't dead and that I'm an army officer. Well, now that puts burrs all over my saddle blanket. Who would know that? Cap, you didn't say something real clever to somebody, did you? I ain't said nothing to nobody. You sure you didn't say something real smart? I ain't said nothing smart since when you got mad and was gonna fire me. Can't figure who wrote that note. Some riders just came over this top ridge. Get back to your post. You two take the horses down the trail. The women are gonna be with wit, Sam. This has got to be done without them getting in the way of any gunfire. Young fella, you may be an army officer. The governor of the territory borrowed to help him out. But I'm still sheriff of this here county, and these is my deputies. And I figure to run this show with bullets. You see what I mean? We've got both ends closed up. We don't want to hurt the ladies. Sing out if you want to go down. Single file with your hands up. I told you I didn't like it one bit. Never once you were right, Calico. Go on down, Sam. Flop, I'll get one of the boys to throw a blanket over you. Better get some sleep. You got a long ride tomorrow. Ah, we'll sleep all right. We got to be real careful of our health now. Either of you boys like to tell me who wrote that note that I wasn't dead? I'd pay a couple of hundred dollars. Well, Calico's broke. He might tell you. For 200, sure I will. Who wrote it? There's just one thing about that 200. What about it? You've got to guarantee me I can spend it in Mexico. <laughs> I'm afraid I can't do that. Oh, I'm afraid I can't remember who it was wrote that note. <laughs> then we can't do business. I like that, Calico. You got character. I got troubles. And life is full of troubles. Life? That's life. <laughs> ah, sleep easy, friend. When it's not, she's... You don't want to live on Fort River Ranch. I think sometimes women know more about men than men do about women. What you said is like the door to a house. You have to open it and see what's inside. Like, for instance, what do women know? I knew you were looking at me all the time while you were saying those things to Julianne at Barnaby's store, back when you pretended to shoot Sam. I also know that you have kissed many girls with your lips. But I am the only girl you ever kissed with your heart. I know you love me, Johnny, but I'd like to hear you say it in words, out loud. I always figured a man was a fool to get married. Weighs him down. He 
never walks as wide or as tall from the minute he's got a woman hanging on his arm. But I want to marry you. Doesn't matter if from then on I walk an inch narrow and only a foot tall. I want to. Johnny, you are going to let him go. You've got to. He let you go. He gave me your life and, and he threw his own life away. Yeah, and he threw me a dollar. I'm Army. I've got a job to do. And I'll stand at Jefferson while a territorial officer hangs him. There's no other way. Julianne's young and pretty. She'll find another man. Goodbye, Johnny. Too bad we didn't work out. What you gawking at? Why ain't you got fresh horses ready? You won't need no fresh horses, Buck. Not for a while. Them soldiers you pass is on the way up the powder. Red Cloud Blue. Red Cloud? Why didn't you say so? How long are we likely to be held here? Well, not being Red Cloud, I don't know the answer. But if you want to keep your hair, you better stay until them soldiers chase them back up north. What's the trouble? Red Cloud. You're crazy. Red Cloud and his band were driven up into Canada last year. This is this year. Man answered me, didn't he? Lacey's been captured. I don't believe it. Well, all you got to do is step outside. Him and the squint-eyed gents just being locked up in the barracks. I'm only a supply sergeant. I haven't got any authority to take those prisoners off your hands, but the patrol will be back here in a week. Thanks, sergeant. Well, hello, Mr. Martin. Traveling? I know what you're thinking. Thought I was dead, didn't you? Yes, yes, yes I did. Well, I ain't. And I caught Whit Lacey and his number one boy, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good work, uh, Sheriff. I, but about you, I, I don't understand. Uh, well, you'll have to tell me all about this. The drinks are on me. Take number five. I put the ladies in six. Thank you. Give me a tall one. I can use it. say exactly now that you're standing in front of me. There is a thing I hoped you'd come to say, Johnny. You've got to understand I can't let him go. Then there is nothing to say. What, uh, what's the next step with Whit? Out of my territory. He's drums prisoner now. Throws from here to Jefferson. Will they hang him there? Yep. Don't you worry, Mr. Martin. Your high-grade ore will be safe from now on. <laughs> I think I'll get some sleep, though. I can tell the bad Umbry just by looking at him. And, mister, that Whit Lacey is bad. 
And that squint-eyed fellow that's with him. Oh. Seems to me a waste of time and money to take him to Jefferson to hang. Yeah, that's the way the government does everything, long way around. Plus which, he might escape on the way. Yeah. Plus which, we got a lot of good ropes right here. Johnny, Johnny. Darling. Who, me? They are going to lynch wit. government you're fooling with. I'm an officer in the United States Cavalry. I order you all to disperse. Let's lynch him, too. He don't dare shoot. Where's the gent who said he wouldn't shoot? <laughs> he got a headache on his knob. Now they'll probably smuggle those bandits out of the fort tonight and start for Jefferson. We ought to stop it. How? Well, by using brains instead of brawn. I didn't see you around when the trouble was going on, and you were so full of talk about lynching. Let's do some thinking. Hello, Johnny. Sure seemed a big thing to you whether we hang here in Jefferson. We was wondering why. My orders say Jefferson. We're gonna slide out of here pretty soon. That mob's getting charged up on whiskey and they'll be primed for trouble. Sergeant? Yes, sir. See that these men are fed. Have our horses and two pack horses behind the jail in an hour. Yes, sir. Uh, Johnny. Yeah? You know, if there'd been one man in that mob with nerve enough to dust off a fiddle, you'd have been a gone goslin. Mobs don't generally have that one man. <laughs> Now, why would he take such a long chance on getting down just to save our necks for a couple of days? He's army. You can't figure out army guys. They think crazy. Hmm. Well, it may be different. I wish I was in Sonora with a swell gal I know. Why? You scared of hanging? No, but it'll sure keep me from seeing that gal in Sonora. <laughs> Don't move or I'll cut both of you in half. going to be in the hanging. All you got to do is to watch it. Pull the wagon away! Wait! Give them a chance for a last word. Yeah, maybe they want to pray. Give them a last word. You got anything you want to say? Don't breathe on me. You smell bad. How about you? Just remember, nothing lasts forever. That don't make sense. Nothing does. When I count three, take her away. One, two, and... I think that gun's got a lot of range, friend. Must be them bullets got feet. Let's get to the wall, Ben. They'll charge. Turn to how we're fixed for ammunition. Give a fool a gun, he's still a fool. Only a louder one. Sam, make a round of the stockade. See if you can stop some of those idiots from shooting at shadows. Right. You ever come closer to hanging, Calico? Once. San Antonio. <laughs> 
Well, baby, nobody ever knows what number's coming up next in a big wheel. Hey, Johnny, I fight Indians real good. I was at Dobie Wells and Big Cimarron. We got a rifle for you. Wish you could see things differently. I can't. I made the Apache campaign with Phil Sheridan, so I know something about Indian fighting. The Sioux believe that any warrior killed in the dark stays in the dark forever, so they won't attack until dawn. We're gonna have the sergeant here divide you men into four groups. First group will go on guard immediately. The rest of you grab some sleep. Sleep? Uh, with the war drums booming in the hills? You're crazy. I ain't sleeping. Not with my wife and kids here. Uh, I'm in command, so do as I say. Through the night, there'll be occasional flurries of fire arrows, and the drumming will continue. That's to keep us awake and on edge. When the drumming stops, it'll be dawn and the Sioux will attack. Sergeant, line these men up and divide them into four groups. All right, men, line up. We'll get things organized. You fellas on the other side, line up here. Hello, Johnny. Dance ought to be starting pretty soon. You see anything? A uh, little white dust clouds over behind the foothill. They're making medicine. Anything to report? I don't know, Major. You can't hear much of this tarnation drumming. Seems that every patch of darkness is filled with those red hellions. Take it easy. Darkness plays hob with a man's imagination. I could have sworn something moved just now out there by that outbuilding. Sergeant, what is that building? Langer's store, Major. Cease firing! We're only wasting ammunition. Bring the water, quick! Bring that ladder! Hurry with that ladder! Put it up there! Bring the water! Hurry! That building's got to be cleared. We'll have to do it silently with knives. A couple of men could do the job. Stake out there till daybreak. See what I mean, Johnny? Yeah, we'd have them in a crossfire. <laughs> well, don't look at me. I'm not going out there. I wasn't. Why, you fellas won't have a chance in a million. Well, that's pretty good odds, the way I figure it. Of course, if we whipped them, we'd be out in the clear where we could make a run for the mountains. I never did look forward to hanging with any relish. <laughs> Thanks, Calico. Well, don't thank me. I'm only thinking of my own skin. But three of us ain't very many. Look here, Drum. I'm not used to manual labor, and Sam's trying to make Just me... our man. Don't want to work. But you're brave enough, aren't you, mister? You'll fight. I certainly. You see, he volunteers. <laughs> Always joking, that calico. We're taking a little posse to clear those firebugs from the outbuildings. You won't be coming back. <laughs> ah, how you women get ideas. I'm going with you. Sorry, baby. This time, you'd only be in the way. I don't care. I... Where's Calico? He'll be right along. You can't wait. Open the gate, Sergeant. Figure they'll make it, Sheriff. Rather have the Sioux sneaking up on me than them two umbers. Nice going, Whit. Don't go getting itchy fingers. It's only me. I brought you another volunteer. Now go ahead, start yelling. You'll have the place swarming with Sue. Martin wrote that note about you. Figured on breaking the mine and buying it in cheap. He's got a streak of yellow pay dirt a mile wide. Right up the middle of his back. 
So you're the man we've been looking for, Martin. If we get out of this, you're included in the hanging. Get me out of here, Major. I'll pay anything. How much? Oh, shut up, Calico. Money? <laughs> now you got plenty. But when the old equalizer moves in from the outside, your hair won't stay on any longer than mine. These Indians had rifles. Here, look at it. United States Cavalry. So we might just as well have made the money. They got them anyway. Well, it won't be a short party. They got plenty of ammunition. Sergeant? Yes? Somebody went outside, over the wall on a rope. I couldn't see clear, but it looked to me like a woman. Get back to your post. You helped her, didn't you? Let me alone. Come on up, sweetheart. Looks like I picked myself a real woman. Oh, darling. I couldn't stand the wondering and waiting. I had to come. Sure, kid. I understand. Calico, help me pile this stuff against the door. Our next customers may not be so friendly. Fires for the last 10 minutes. Guess the Major's party made it. Knew they would. Things are mighty quiet. Except for that blasted drumming. They won't be when the drumming stops. You suppose the cavalry will get back in time? Only in storybooks. If I get out of this, there's a rope waiting. I'm no good for you, Julie. You're going back to the stockade with Johnny. I give the orders around here. I take her. Shut up, yellow belly. I'm staying with. Just a thought, sweetheart. Just a thought. You know, Sam, I've been thinking. What about? About who sent that note to Whit, telling about Drummond that you were still alive. I never said nothing to nobody, except Mr. Martin. Why, you stupid half-baked. It must have been Martin all the time. Go find him, bring him here. You don't want a good recruit, do you? If you speak real nice, let you have tap. Don't go doing the Army any favors, Sheriff. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. You're gonna make a run for the stockade with Johnny. Oh, no, Whit. No, please don't make me go. Please. Smile for me, Julie. Grit your teeth and smile, sweetheart. You gotta take her out, Johnny. Martin will go. Yes. Yes, I'll do it, Whit. He'll toss Julie to those red devils and make a run for it. You and me are the only ones that know about him. And we'd be gone. You'd just love that, wouldn't you, Yellow Belly? He still goes. He can't go now. Someone's got to get her out, Johnny. It's got to be you. Put your gun up, Whit. You're not going to use it on me. Please take her, Johnny. This is better for us than a rope. I'll take her out. I'll look around outside. All clear, Johnny. Take care of her. She's a good kid. It's 
So long, White Knight. Johnny, I love you.
approved your letter of resignation and forwarded it to Washington. And until your discharge arrives, you're on leave. Thank you, sir. Goodbye, Major. Bye, Sergeant. Goodbye, sir. Sam. Johnny. Hello, Ben. You wouldn't happen to be passing a place called Texas, would you? Mm-hmm. Be very happy to drop you off on the way. Johnny. Yeah? Fork River Ranch. Not for more than the rest of your life, sweetheart. 